Okay guys, how's it going? So I thought I'd do a very quick video on this product, which is the Insta360 Go 2, the new um, new sort of little mini action camera. I'm not gonna do a full video on this because about a million people have already done them, but I do think my input is valid for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I watched a bunch of different reviews before ordering this and I think about 90, 95% of the reviews that I've seen so far, far are by people that have been sponsored and they've gotten the gear for free or they've actually been paid for the review. And I think this is one of those products that they really have flooded the market with uh, YouTubers, um, paid YouTuber reviews, basically. Um, and so I think a lot of people are raving about this a little bit more than they would usually. Not to say that it's a terrible product, but um, I'm gonna be returning it and I thought I would tell you guys why I'm gonna be returning it. So first of all, just to cover the basics, um, I use action cameras quite a lot. I use them on my FPV quads. I use them for kite surfing on the beach. I use them for my family. So I am like a, a real action camera consumer. Um, I'm very fussy about my image quality, but I also realize some products are just for fun and they don't need to be, you know, epic, you know, kind of crazy, crazy Alexa image quality. They can just be what they are, but I bought this for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I was hoping it would be a really nice light option that I could mount on an FPV, FPV drone. Uh, this is the, the Beta 95X, Beta FPV 95X, sorry. Um, the version three, which w will not support a heavy camera, obviously, because it's a tiny little thing. Um, if you whack a normal size GoPro on it, it looks like this, which is a bit kind of crazy. Um, and it needs a light, lightweight camera. Most people either, they either get a skeleton version of the standard GoPro or they get little tiny uh, Insta cameras like this or something similar. So that was my main purpose for getting this, hoping it would be a nice lightweight um, little thing because this thing weighs, I believe it's 27 grams, something like that, which is a lot less than a, a standard GoPro. I mean, you can see the size difference is massive. Anyway, let's get into the meat of this because it's not gonna be a full review. It's just gonna be my take on it and why I have a few problems with it. So firstly, my first tests were walking around holding the Hero 8 um, and the InstaGo 2. And my first shots with it, my first test with it, I was thinking, wow, this is actually a real competitor to GoPro. It's doing really well. It's highlight retention was actually better than the GoPro, both in the flat mode, this is in the pro, pro video mode, and this was in 4K 4x3, which I then put through real steady because I get even better results than I do with the in-camera stabilization. Um, and so, yeah, my first results were really, really good, just handheld. And I was thinking this is actually incredibly good for the, the size and the weight and all the rest of it. Uh, but then I started putting it on my quads. So I put it on my five inch quad. I put it on uh, this quad. I actually put it on my five inch uh, performance quad with the GoPro so I could fly them both at the same time. So I did a bu bunch of different FPV tests basically in standard color mode, in like standard video mode, in pro video mode, in all the different various settings. Just if you know my channel, you know that I'm, I tend to go into quite a lot of detail. I'm not gonna put all that detail into this video. I'm just gonna explain to you, I kind of really picked this thing apart and tested it in every possible way to come to my conclusions that I'm about to give you now. So basically let's cut to the, um, cut to the chase. It does not like vibrations. Um, like the GoPro is remarkably resilient, at sort of high frequency vibrations, like the kind of stuff that you get when you stick it on a quad. So with this, we get lots of jello and lots of vibration and it doesn't matter. I was trying to, I was padding out with um, foam and rubber and various different ways that I was kind of like mounting on the drone, quite a few different ways. And I basically got jello in every single way that I mounted it, including using little rubber grommets and other things like this. And even when I mounted it onto the rubber case of this with rubber mounts, and this was on a rubber mount as well. So it had like multiple, <laughs> multiple rubber mounts between it and the quad. And it was still suffering very badly from, from jello. So for FPV purposes, unless you've got like an incredibly well-tuned quad with really good insulated um, camera mount, I would say to steer clear of this if you want to get really nice buttery looking smooth shots. Obviously, if you put an ND on there and slow the shutter down, that's gonna massively reduce the jello problem. 
but then you're going to get lots of motion artifacts. So when it does its stabilization in, in post in the application that comes with this, uh, you're going to get those motion artifacts. So when you when the camera does a quick um, you know movement or jitter or whatever, so you won't so much get the 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 jello, but you're going to get these little motion blur after effects, which I'm really fussy about that kind of stuff. Anything to do with jello or stuttering or anything that doesn't look smooth, kind of like grates on me, like uh, you know fingernails on a chalk chalkboard, and I just absolutely hate it. I know certainly. Clearly, many other people are not as fussy as I am with that kind of stuff. So maybe, you know, it falls below your tolerances of um, nitpickingness, if that's a word. But anyway, for me, this is going to go back to, to Amazon. I'm going to get a refund um, because it just isn't fit for purpose for FBV use, unfortunately. Because the thing is really fun little camera. You know, there is a lot of great things about it. Uh, the case idea is great. The fact that the case charges it, the fact that the case controls it. So you've got your information on the, the screen. Um, the size and the weight of it is really good fun for like, you know, running around on the beach or just, uh, you know, if you're going for a, a jog or you're doing climbing or something like that. This is so much more convenient than uh, a big old GoPro. You know, it's kind of more in line with a, a session. I'm looking around for my session now to show you that comparison, I can't find it, but you get the idea, you know, a session's a little bit bigger than that square there, isn't it? So, you know, so yeah, so it has lots of good things about it and the stabilization is remarkably good when you run it through the pro, uh, app, the, the pro video mode and then through the application that it comes through. It is remarkably good, but it doesn't matter how good the stabilization, stabilization is, if you've got jello in your shot, you've got jello in your shot and the stabilization will not remove it. So that is the issue I have with it, which is a real shame because I was getting very, very excited about it when it first arrived. Um, but now that I've done further testing, I'm afraid it's going back in the box and it's going back to um, eBay. Uh, sorry, it's going back to Amazon. And instead, I'm, I'm looking for a second hand one of these, which I'm going to skeletonize, um, pull, all, pull all the bits out and then put the Hero 8 bits back into a skeleton housing because that's just much better. But if you are just buying a camera for fun, I would seriously consider this. If you just want it for family shots and for casual action camera type shots, I would seriously consider this because it is a lot of fun and you're way more likely going to use this than you are uh, a Hero 8 in terms of, you know, when you've got it on you, just because it's so small and discreet. You don't have to have, you can mount it much easier. Uh, you know, you can sort of put it on your shirt, on your on your chest without getting like a whole harness and stuff and it just pops on the lip with the, the magnet so it does have good things about it it really does um, and I don't hate it but for my purposes it just it just cannot withstand uh, enough vibrations for FPV anyway guys like I said I don't want to get into a big old hullabaloo about this because I don't want to do a full review it's a nifty thing but just be aware that I, I must have watched about 15 or 20 reviews before I ordered it. And I, I realized many of them were, were sponsored. So I was taking them with a bit of, um, you know, salt, taking them with a grain of salt, whatever the expression is. Uh, and I, I just thought I'd decide for myself when I get it. And I have done. And I do think quite a lot of the people that were raving about this um, were doing it because it was a paid review. That's that's my opinion. I might be wrong. Um, like I said, it is a fun, fun thing and it's novel and it's different. It does do things that the GoPro cannot do. Uh, but the things that I want it to do in terms of image quality and resistance stabiliz uh, resistance to vibration, I should say, it can't do. So anyway, guys, that's enough. Just, just my two cents on it. Peace out. And I hope that bit of information was vaguely useful. Cheers.